This is David with Best Rest Products, home of a cycle pump tire inflator that has a lifetime warranty. Today's video is a little bit unusual. We're going to be doing something that may be controversial and some might say is unsafe. We're going to be demonstrating some alternatives to using uh, the traditional methods of spreading the tire sidewall for a tubeless tire to get it to spread out so that it makes the initial contact with the rim so that you can begin to build pressure using a cycle pump or something else. Um, you know, on a, on a tire, you've got the sidewalls, and when you finally get it mounted onto the rim, they may not be in contact with that rim. And it's necessary for you to physically spread that tire in this fashion so that when you do, it makes contact with the rim so that you can build pressure. And we've covered this in our donor hose video and in our bead setter video. And in the shop, you use a blast of high pressure air from the compressor. Um, but we don't have that on top of a mountain. You could use the donor hose and that works 90% of the time. And the strap system that we have, the bead setter works too. But there's another technique that people don't talk about, but I have used to blast that sidewall outwards and that is using ether. Oh my gosh, we're gonna blow ourselves up. Well, there's some, some risk involved here and we're not endorsing this. This is uh, not something that Best Rest says you should do. I'm showing you what's worked for me and I'm going to show you an alternative to using uh, ether in the field to blast those sidewalls out. What we're going to do is show you an alternative to using ether. And the reason I want to show you that alternative is ether is commonly found in starting fluid. Um, it's highly volatile. You spray it in the carburetor, it helps the engine start. And this is what people typically would use to blast their sidewalls open. And the process goes like this. The tire's down on its side, and they spray a line of this starting fluid into the crack between the tire and the rim. And then they take a match, and they touch it to the ether, and the explosion inside the tire causes the sidewalls to blast outward and make the contact with the rim. That's the principle behind it, and it really works. I've used it for quad tires. I've used it for motorcycle tires does come with risk and if you follow these procedures you do so at your own risk we're not responsible the trouble with this is it's so big and you might be able to find a shorter can but this is not something I would carry on the motorcycle the chance of me needing to to blast a sidewall using ether or volatile compounds is is fairly small so I'm not willing to carry this and I'm not concerned about my bike starting because it's been very reliable um, so what could I use instead of this? Well, people have talked about using WD-40. There's some volatile compounds in there, although they're very small. The amount is relatively small, and we're going to show you in our test demo. But that's too big a can. This is a more convenient can. Maybe this is something you'd want to carry on the bike. That's up to you. But what we found were some small cans of butane. I got this in a, in a sporting goods shop. This thing weighs one ounce and it's very small. This I could, I could justify carrying in the saddlebag of the motorcycle wherever I go because it doesn't take up much room, it doesn't weigh very much, and I'm going to show you how to use this to accomplish the same thing as the starting fluid. Um, first we have to modify this butane canister and the reason we have to modify it is when you get it from the supplier it's got a, a pointed nozzle. It's very long. And the only way that this is dispenses, this dispenses is you have to push down on this long nozzle. So what we do is we're going to modify a spray cap off a paint can, or in this case it happens to be an old can of windshield spray and wash. We're going to take some dimensions and we're going to modify the end of this little canister so that this nozzle fits on the end of it and we'll get a good seal on the nozzle and when we press on the button the butane will come out through the nozzle just as though we were using a spray can. The way that we start is we take a set of calipers and we measure the opening size of this uh, nozzle 
and it doesn't really matter what the dimension is, it just has to fit at one point on this small funnel at the end of this can of butane. And so I've measured down and I see the point at which I'm at the same dimension. And then I took a pair of cutoffs and I cut the end of this can of butane so that when I put my red nozzle on the end of it, it's a good press fit. And I'm not losing any of the butane around the edges. Now one thing about this butane is when we use it, we want it to be upside down. And the reason is, if I spray it like this, I get mostly just the propellant. But if I turn it upside down, then I get liquids. And that's really what I want, is I want some liquid butane that's going to go into the tire, or in this case, into our test rocket, uh, so that I develop a, an explosive mixture inside our rocket or inside our tire. And then when I touch a match or an ignition source, this thing is going to go foof. Um, you can watch YouTube videos that shows this process, and often these guys uh, go overboard on the ether. Maybe they're mounting tractor tires, maybe they're mounting uh, truck tires. Generally, they go a little bit overboard. What we found is that uh, if we gave it too much ether, too much butane, too much WD-40, we didn't get any ignition at all. It would burn slowly, but we didn't get the pop that we need to make this process work. Um, our test system here is a very simple set of plastic tubs. This is an empty plastic tub that we've screwed down to a base. This is a big plastic tub with some nails in it, and the purpose of those nails is to just hold it in the tub. We're going to shoot some different fluids in here, and then we're going to ignite it through the touch hole, kind of like we're lighting a cannon. And then we're going to we're going to record how much this moves, and we're going to try to get a, a recording showing the flame spread. We don't want a slow burn with visible flames. We want an instantaneous blast. Oh, gosh. Mr. Bestrest, you're blowing things up. Well, in some ways I am. I am creating a mini explosion inside the tire designed to force those sidewalls out. When that combustion begins inside the tire, it will consume all the oxygen and then any flame that may be in there is going to go out. But if you have the combustible fluid on the outside of the tire, you may have a few flames that you'll have to wipe out with your hand. Uh, the other thing we found is that we remove the valve stem uh, when we're doing this so that there's an escape uh, should the pressure build up too much. But we're ready to put that core back in as quickly as we can so that when the the oxygen is consumed, the tire doesn't shrink down and lose the bead again. Um, watch other YouTube videos. Other people may explain it better. And perhaps we'll even do a video showing that in the near future. So once again, oh, and the most important thing, we have a fire extinguisher nearby. This is a CO2 extinguisher because if we have flames that go elsewhere, we can put out the fire without getting the, uh, the retardant dust all over the garage. Um, so once again, we're going to do WD-40, we're going to do uh, starting fluid, and we're going to use one of these little butane canisters. This is made by Forney, F-O-R-N-E-Y, part number 54822. We're not endorsing this, we're just showing you something that we found this morning when we were shopping at a hardware store uh, here in Napa Vine, Washington. We'll get it set up and we'll show you the demo. So here's our testing protocol. Uh, we have our combustion chamber down below. We have our rocket here. We've got a line right here and we're going to inject some combustible fluids into this container, drop it down, and light it through the touch hole. And then we're going to see what the explosion looks like and how high off the tub this upper canister goes. The higher it is, the, the bigger explosion we have, which is what we want inside the tire. 
Now when this explosion occurs, it's not going to blow your tire apart, but there is a fire hazard. So if you're up in the woods and you're surrounded by stuff that could burn, you know, it's not something you'd want to do. First thing I'm going to test is our standard, which is the uh, starting fluid, ether. That's what you would use to start a car. Steve's going to stand over here with a fire extinguisher. He's going to light the touch hole. Come on over here, Steve. And we're going to give this a very short blast of starting fluid. Are you ready with the match? Lit. And there we had our explosion. Let's put this out. That was our standard. Now we'll try the same thing using the butane. Before we do, we'll purge this canister and let that air out so that we don't have any uh, partially burned oxygen inside. We want to have the same standard that we use for every single test. So now we're going to do the butane using the same length of spray as we did with the big can of starting fluid. And what we saw, we may have to put that out, Steve. We're good. What we saw was the, the jug moved up, perhaps not as much as the ether, but we still got the same explosive effect that we were looking for. That explosive effect is going to spread those tire sidewall beads the way that we want. Next, we're going to test a small can of WD-40 of the size that you could comfortably carry with you on a motorcycle. Let's see if this works. Nothing. We have no ignition. Let's try that again. We'll spray more. Steve? We're getting, we're getting no ignition, no explosion. And that kind of goes along with uh, with my experience with WD-40, it may have some volatile elements to it, but most of this is a solvent and a light oil, and uh, there may be some propellants that are explosive, but not what, what we would want to use for this process. One more time, we will do the can of butane to show that again. You ready, Steve? And we just showed how high this rose, and that gives us an idea of how much explosive force it contains. Fire extinguisher in case this is still lit. Nope. And one more time, just for the record, we'll do some of the starting fluid. And you saw how that worked. You can compare the video on the starting fluid to the small can of butane. We think this is a pretty good alternative to this big can of starting fluid. So let's get back to the safety thing. You know, we have an explosion going on. Uh, you know, I guess you'd say we're professionals and we kind of know what we're doing. We've been practicing with this for a while to make sure it was viable setting up the test system. But this is not something for the faint of heart. Uh, this is not something recommended uh, by Best Rest Products or any of our affiliates. It's not recommended by David Peterson or Steve Irby, but it's something that we have used and it might be something you would consider doing yourself. Uh, we've compared the butane to the ether starting fluid. We've showed you how to modify this butane so that you can turn it into an aerosol that will spray uh, the fluids that we need. Remember, you have to turn this upside down. This is something small enough you can carry in your bike. Watch some other videos on how to blast a tire sideways using ether. But under any circumstance, never ever use gasoline for this purpose. Gasoline has different flame characteristics. When you pour gasoline on a tire, you are going to have a fire. And the fumes from that gas will go all over, and people have been burned by that. The gasoline burns more slowly. It doesn't explode in the short period of time that you would expect or that you would need from butane or, butane or the ether. This is David with Best Rest Products. We'll see you on the trail.
before we play this again, we're going to take and purge. Well, we have flame. Yeah. Before we do this again, we're going to purge. Okay. Start over. Uh, that did not. Uh, let's go see what we have. Put me out. Okay. It took me too long to get the match. Here. Okay. Our final test will determine if butane can cause an explosion in a highly gaseous environment. Here we go. <laughs> 